anytime the Yankees can do something that they haven't done in 60 years, I mean, think about that. The New York Yankees franchise that it seems they've accomplished everything, something that they do that I haven't seen in my lifetime winning 12 straight ball games. that is just another incredible accomplishment in the unlikeliest of regular seasons when you think about it, the way that this year started and how awful it's been for the Yankees, and now all of a sudden you look at the last month or so, whatever it's been, and specifically those 12 straight, the Yankees are just dominating. So impressive performance from them. You could get into the bullpen and Loisaga and Holmes. You could get into John Carl Stanton, who continues to rake Aaron Judge, who continues to come up clutch. But the big picture for me, is that remember now, because after the slow start in the regular season, the disappointing start to the regular season, the unacceptable start to the regular season, the big picture now is back to what it always is for the Yankees. And that is, can this team win a World Series? Will this team win a World Series? That's what it's about. And it's good to be back there. And it's good to watch these. I mean, these games are great, right? You're watching entertaining, exciting games that mean something. Usually the regular season's a bore for the Yankees because they're so far in front of everybody or they have a playoff spot locked up. That has not been the case. It's been anything but this year. But this year, the regular season means something, so it's fun to watch them go to Oakland, specifically one of the teams that is in the wild card race with them, even though the Yankees now should have their sights on Tampa Bay and trying to close that gap even further in the American League East as we sit today, right now, four games back of the Rays, comfortably in front of the Red Sox in that Eastern Division. But really, it's about can this team go win their first World Series since 2009? And you're now watching these games with a thought ahead to what it's going to be like in the playoffs. And that's what it should be for the New York Yankees. No more, what's Cashman going to do in the offseason? Should Aaron Boone be fired? This guy's no good. Extend that guy, sign that guy. No. Now it is again about winning. The, they're making the playoffs. I mean, I think we all know that at this point. That's a foregone conclusion. It is about can this team do what they're doing now into the postseason? I mean, I think the answer is yes, but obviously there are some question marks. So when you watch these games, which I think is a good thing, and we'll get to that in a second, these one-run games, you watch these games, you're thinking, okay, well, what would happen in this spot in the playoffs? Does Chapman have it? Has Chapman refound it? And again, he got through it last night, but still, I'm sure there's a little concern amongst Yankee fans where you got to get him to where you feel really comfortable in this final month of the season before you get to October. You look at it and you look at a guy like Jamison Tyler and say, yeah, he's been great for the last couple of months, whatever, however many starts since he turned his season around. But then you watch him last night, you stay to a 6 nothing lead. You got to be better than that. That can't happen in the postseason. There are no more, oh, yeah, well, you get him next time in the postseason. One start like that from Tyone, that could implode an entire series. It could ruin a series. So where's the Yankee pitching behind Garrett Cole? We're going to find out with Corey Kluber as he comes back on, what, Monday he's scheduled to pitch Kluber. And, you know, you have him, you have uh, Tyone, you have Cortez. They're going to figure out Montgomery, how they're going to work that rotation in the postseason. But that's what we're looking at now for the Yankees. About those one-run games, I mean, are people actually worried because the Yankees are winning too many one-run games? This is a thing now? One-run, like it matters? If you win, you win. If you lose, you lose. By one run, five runs, six runs, doesn't matter. A win is a win. Doesn't matter who you're playing, although obviously you want to see it done against teams that are going to be in the playoffs. But it doesn't matter how many you win by. Matter of fact, this is a great thing for the Yankees, the fact that they're not blowing out opponents where you snooze through the game like they're playing the Twins. As I told you last week, what a waste of time that is. Nobody wants to see Yankees Twins. We all know the result. Yankees are going to pound them. End of story. Playoffs, regular season, doesn't matter. It's been happening forever. So I like these one-run games because I do think it battle-tests the Yankees. They have playoff experience, so it's not just about that. But it also, it helps Aaron Boone navigating his way through a one-run game. A game where the Yankees blow a lead and have to come back and get a clutch hit from Aaron Judge late in the ballgame. And then preserve that lead. Getting two clutch innings out of the wise are going to keep it where it is. You're having your, you know, the young arms that maybe aren't as tested. Get legitimate experience against against good teams on the road in a playoff race here. 
in tight ball games. That is certainly better than, well, the Yankees up 11-1 as we head to the seventh. Here comes Albert Abreu on to pitch. I mean, why bother? So now you have games that aren't exactly playoff games, but they do have that playoff type feel. And I think that's going to benefit this Yankee group. I've said it before. Now, full disclosure, I say it every year. Yankees are going to win the World Series. Every year, I feel that the Yankees are going to win the World Series. I thought they had some issues going into this season, but I still thought that they'd get in the postseason. You look around the rest of the American League, any team really scare you that much? And the Astros are fine, whatever. And the White Sox. And now that we've seen the regular season, Yankees have handled the White Sox. They've handled the Astros. They've now showed they can beat the Red Sox. And they even kind of punch back against the Rays. That would maybe be the one team that would be a threat. But step back and look at it. And you can look at it on paper. You can look at it, what the Yankees have done these last 12 games or even you know the last 40, 50 game sample. That team, when they are clicking, nobody in the American League is beating them. Nationally, maybe a little different story with the Dodgers, with the Giants. Nobody in the American League can beat the Yankees if they perform up to their abilities. I mean, they are freaking loaded. And that's what it should be about now. So for the final month, this is not it's not really a playoff race. I know it kind of is, but it's not really that. It's more of an evaluation of, okay, how is this team going to go from where they are now to World Series champions because that is always the expectation for the Yankees. And we lost sight of that because of their awful start. World Series? I mean, they were lucky that we'd be talking about them in the playoff conversation. But now that we're here, now that we've watched them win 12 straight, and by the way, keep it going. I mean, not that it means anything. We've seen other teams go on these long winning streaks throughout the course of a regular season. I mean, it means you have a, a good team. doesn't mean you're going to win the World Series if you win 20 straight. We've seen that before. But it's fun and something that Yankee fans, while they've experienced the highest of highs, more so than anybody else in this town, well, we're filled with losers here. Islanders haven't won in forever. The Rangers haven't won since 94. The Knicks haven't won in forever. The Jets haven't won in forever. Outside of the Giants and the Yankees, you know, the Mets, obviously, it's been 86. And we'll get to them in a little bit. I mean, the Yankees are the only fan base that's actually tasted some consistent success here. In the last 40 years, maybe longer. But this is something that a lot of people, and I don't know how old you guys are, but I mean, I would think the majority, it's 60 years. So even if you are 60 years of age, it's been a long time since you saw this or lived through what we're seeing here with the Yankees winning 12 straight. So it is fun. And I do think that each season, you know, you can talk about World Series or bust. I get it. That's the expectation for the Yankees every year, especially now since they've righted the ship. But there are things in each individual season that you remember. You'll remember this 2021 season and the way that they struggled early on, the way that everybody wanted Boone and Cashman fired. You'll remember them digging out of it and winning 12 straight, maybe more. But ultimately, for the New York Yankees, the expectation is still World Series or bust. And now there's no excuse. They made the trades they had to make. Uh, And obviously, you've seen what Gallo can do. Just when he connects, mashes homers. You've seen what Rizzo can do. A tremendous all-around player. Something they sorely needed. And I know we talk about the lefty-righty balance, but it's much more than that. You're also adding two guys who can play defense. Gallo in the outfield. Rizzo at first base. Experienced players. But they also made some bullpen moves that maybe at the time we kind of dismissed. Holmes, who's this guy from the Pirates? Holmes has been good for the Yankees. Joely Rodriguez, nobody really gave that much of a thought. These guys could be major factors for the Yankees in the playoffs. And while you may have a concern about their bullpen, and we said this a week ago, while you may have a concern about their bullpen moving forward, and outside of that, I mean, what's the concern? How Aaron Boone manages that bullpen? Outside of those two things, the bullpen itself how Aaron Boone and the Yankees front office manage that bullpen, that's it. Where are the other issues on this team? Obviously staying healthy, but that you know that goes without saying. That's for everybody. Where are the other issues? 
the lineup is stacked. They're going to only get better, you would expect. I mean, are you concerned about once Glaber comes back and has to replace Velasquez? You lose a little bit there. Crazy to say, but it's possible. I mean, Velasquez has been a big key for the Yankees during this stretch. But Glaber overall should be the better player, and against better hit, against better pitching in the postseason, you want the better player there. But let's leave the lineup alone. Let's leave the defense alone. They now got versatility with Stanton actually playing the outfield. Wow, how great has Stanton been? By the way, this is what he does. This should not be a surprise. He goes on these tears. You'll have to hope he times it right again like he did last year and has it in the postseason. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter. But nobody should be shocked. Oh, did you see the exit, Philo? Oh, look at how hard he hit that baseball. Yeah, that's what he does when he actually connects. And that's why he's maddening. Because he goes on these two-week runs and you're thinking, oh, where the hell has this been all year long? And then he goes and looks, you know, the 0 for 5, 5 strikeouts, and, you know, social distancing from the baseball. Anyway, the versatility from Stanton, being able to play in the outfield now, that is a huge help to this Yankees team. Not only, you know, maybe adding Voight to that lineup at DH and making it a much more powerful lineup, but also keeping that spot to where you can rest guys, give guys a breather, give Judge a day from the outfield, especially he's going to be playing center field. Get Sanchez in that lineup at DH if he need be. Whatever. There's, it, it was a roadblock with John Carl Stanton locked into the DH spot and nothing else. And it was a problem for the Yankees. Now that's not there. So the only potential issues are the bullpen itself and how Boone uses that bullpen come playoff time. But in the playoffs, everything changes. You now have starters. You know, the Yankees have, they might not have a loaded, great rotation. They do have the ace, which is something they've been missing outside of last year, and which is just, I mean, I'm throwing last year out. The shortened season, playoffs, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm not counting that as a real season. That's just me. But they do have the ace. They need to find who's going to back him up in that rotation. But the other guys, they can be moved to the bullpen. And the Yankees already have a bunch of arms that prove to be useful. They're going to have, you know what their issue is going to be? Figuring out which guys to keep, which guys to keep off the roster. Which guys, I've used the wrong syllable there. The wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable. Which guys to keep, which guys to keep off the roster. (laughs) Take two. Anyway, that's going to be, they have a lot of options there. It's just a matter of who you trust in big spots. Now, one thing they have to do, stop with the matchups. I mean, I don't mind it in certain situations. They have to stop living and dying by the analytics and the matchups. They've Hopefully they've learned in the past where it can't be all that. You can't just say, well, green on paper is supposed to be good against this guy and then go with green. Or whoever, just, just pick a reliever. It's about gut feel. It's about trust. You know, Adovino in years past. Okay, well, here comes a lane of right-handed bats. Let's bring in Adovino. He should get through it. Why? Because I'm looking at the paper. Looking at the animal. Let me flip through my paper sound for effect. I'm looking at the paper. It says right here, he should get him. And we got right-handers coming up that struggle with a guy like Adovino. And this is his lane. Wrong again. Doesn't always work like that. So a gut feel of who they can trust, figuring out in order of the arms that you could trust back there. Right now, Loisica, Holmes, to me, those two would be two of the more trustworthy arms. But they have a bunch. Joely Rodriguez against lefties. And obviously, getting Chapman figured out is going to be a big deal. And I don't know if I'd say it's imperative, but they need to figure that out now because they can't have it, you know, over the next month, they can't have an implosion from Chapman in the postseason. And the way that he's gone this year, I'm not so sure how you can trust that that's not going to happen. And if he does seem like he's going to get then get him out. So maybe instead of just making him the close, you also pick your spots with him. But the point is, big picture... And we've known this now for the last several weeks. I did the show with Moose a couple weeks back on that Monday before the Red Sox series and said, I just, I, I, it, I've I, come to the realization that this team is going to win the World Series. Now, again, I say that every year, but this year I feel like it's different. But that's what it's about. Have fun riding this winning streak as long as it may go. Have fun watching the Yankees on the West Coast and then returning home. And then you have the Blue Jays with the Subway Series. Close it out with the Rays. Chase down the Rays. Could be about that too. But ultimately, it's about the Yankees chasing 
their first World Series win since 2009. And it's nice to have that order restored to where a month ago it was, oh my goodness, is this team going to make the playoffs? What an awful year. 877-337-6666. I guess we'll get to the Mets because we have to at some point. I'll look big picture with them too because this year it doesn't matter. I mean, they're irrelevant right now, which is even worse than being angry. I know some of you may be expecting a Mets rant. I'm not giving you a Mets rant. What is it, a rant? I've, I've already got all those out of my system. They're dead in the water. They've, they're five games under 500. It's over. But we'll get to them. We'll get to some football as well. 877-337-6666. 